नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भक्ति विनोद ठाकुर साइट्स श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु जीव जागो जीव जागो गौर चंद्र बोले खोत नीत्र माय पीसाशीर को ले वेक अप वेक अप स्लीपिंग सोल्स यू आर स्लीपिंग इन द लैप ऑफ माया एंड इन दैट डीप स्लीप माया क्रिएट्स an unbelievable extraordinary dream since time immemorial we have been in that dream utterly forgetful of who we really are and what real happiness is she looks Prabhupada explains the living entity is eternally the part and parcel of Krishna being part of Krishna we are such at ananda eternal full of knowledge and full of bliss but our true nature can only be realized when our desires and our actions are in harmony with our nature therefore when shri chaitanya mahaprabhu was teaching sanatan goswami the very beginning of his teachings the foundation which he built the whole philosophy of krishna consciousness jivara swarupoy krishnara nitya das we are eternally the servants of krishna krishna is purusha we are prakriti krishna is the enjoyer and we are meant to be enjoyed by krishna krishna is the root of all that exists when we water the root of the tree through our devotion our desires our thoughts our actions our words then that happiness that is given to krishna krishna reciprocates and shares with us unlimited happiness Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita it is described the nature of the spiritual world no one has any personal desires for their own well-being what to speak of pleasure their only desire is krishna's pleasure that is love pure love but krishna he reciprocates with the love of his devotee yega tamam prapadyante tamsta taiva bajamya as we approach the lord the lord reciprocates because we want to give him pleasure through love krishna gives us pleasure through his love we are jiva infinitesimal he is vibhu unlimited his love is unlimited it is said you take one step toward krishna krishna gives takes can take unlimited steps toward you the little love of the jiva when it's offered to krishna krishna who's the supreme source and embodiment of all gratitude reciprocates by literally drowning us in his unlimited love and what is the pleasure of tasting krishna's love 
What is the ecstasy of realizing Krishna's love? That is the perfection of Ananda. And those who desire to be the servant of the servant of the servant of the Lord, Krishna nourishes them with the ultimate ecstasies. The example is given of the gopis of Sri Brajdham. They want to assist Rupa Goswami or Rupa Manjari or Sanatan Goswami, Labhanga Manjari. Or Raghunath Das Goswami. And they are assisting Lalita Bishaka. They are assisting Sri Radharani. Radharani is offering their love to Krishna, her love to Krishna, and is compared to a creeper on a tree. Krishna is like the tree, Sri Radha is like the creeper, and the other gopis are like the flowers on that kripa. They are all being nourished by the love Radha is receiving from Krishna. And they are experiencing the highest happiness. They are more pleased, they are more jubilant to see Radha enjoying with Krishna. They have no desire to enjoy directly. Although sometimes Krishna gives them that direct enjoyment out of his own sweet will. This is the happiness of the spiritual world. Where happiness is ever increasing. Nothing is stagnant. It's impossible for the material intelligence to really comprehend how unlimited happiness is increasing unlimitedly at every moment for eternity. Is that comprehensible? That is life in the spiritual world. Things are never the same. Although time is conspicuous by its absence because <clears throat> time does not have the destructive effect it does in this world of creating old age, disease, and death, of taking everything away from us. But in spiritual world, the Yogamaya potency, time is there only to increase the, jo the joy and the variegatedness between the Lord and his devotees. So although, although there aren't moments, still, at every moment, our ecstasy is increasing. Krishna's Navayovana. He's ever fresh. He's ever young. What does that mean? If you're looking at Krishna, every moment you're looking at him, you're seeing something very new, something very special. His beauty always is increasing to you. Now how can something that's unlimitedly beautiful, how will someone who is Aishwaryasya, Samagrasya, Viryasya, Yashashashriya, he is possessing all the six opulences in full. He is all beauty in full, but it's ever increasing. In material world, can we understand this logic? Can something completely full increase? That is Krishna. At every moment. So therefore you can never get tired of looking at Krishna. With material vision, you could look at deity and say, oh, let me go to another temple and see another deity. But premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena, when our eyes are decorated with the mascara of love, Krishna reciprocates with that love. And in his deity form, at every moment, he's becoming more beautiful for you. 
in the spiritual world. Everything is ever fresh. Everything is ever new. Nothing is stagnant. Nothing becomes stale forever. Who would not want to be in a world like that? That is our home. The process of Krishna consciousness is to show us the way back home, back to Godhead. However, in order for that dynamic love and that unlimited bliss in exchange of love to take place by Krishna's supreme intelligence because he is Rasaraj. He is the king, the connoisseur of all Ras, Rasa Shekhar. He knows what real love is about. Can any of you create such unlimited, ever-increasing, ecstatic intimacy of love? If you could, you wouldn't be so miserable today. <laughs> we have seen marriage. Some romance is there at the beginning. But that thin veneer is soon washed away by time. And then it's a matter of responsibility and tolerance. Hare Krishna. And through that responsibility and tolerance, real affection starts to grow. But it's not like in the movies. Because what is a movie? It's just a bunch of light rays on the screen and you're just looking at the screen. And it appears, it appears that there's a beautiful man and a beautiful woman and they're dancing around trees singing, singing, what is it called, guzzles? Or whatever. <laughs> like that. But actually all it is is a bunch of light on a screen. And the amazing thing, in order for you to see it, you have to be in total darkness. <laughs> if they turn on the lights, you don't see, you, just, you see it as it is. It's just a white screen. It's no emotions. But when there's total darkness, and you're in that darkness, then you start seeing this dream. Maya means that which is not. When the living entity, who is given free will, wants to enjoy the position of God, wants to be Purusha, the enjoyer, Krishna lovingly facilitates that by creating material existence. <clears throat> the analogy Srila Prabhupada gives is a little baby. It's in the lap of her, mo her mother and is crying. I want to enjoy the moon. The full moon is in the sky. So far away. And the child's reaching out and crying, weeping, tears to the mother. Give me the moon. I want to enjoy the moon. Give me the moon. So what does the mother do? She puts a mirror in the hands of the child and the reflection of the moon. And the child is satisfied, thinks, yes, the moon is in my hands now. In the same way, when we want to be enjoyer, Krishna creates this dream this dream of illusory energy where we begin to think that we're the enjoyer. The dream of I and mine, Janasya Mohoga Mahamameti. The moon is mine. This property is mine. 
This body is mine. This material existence is compared to a vast ocean. And we are being tossed around by the waves of time. The waves of time. And in that condition, we dream. Under the influence of time, we dream of past, present, and future. And our living conditions are compared to foaming bubbles on the surface of the ocean. The foaming bubbles of our bodily conceptions, our husband, our wife, our children, our home, our so-called important position, prestige, all like foaming bubbles on this ocean of material existence. But all these bubbles are soon by the waves of time to burst into oblivion. That is the dream of material existence. And why? Why we remain in this dream? For one reason alone. Because of our attachment to the dream. <laughs> our attachment to continually try to enjoy material existence. Srila Prabhupada often gives an analogy <clears throat> of a man who is having a dream. In the dream, his head is getting cut off. And he sees his head laying on the ground. It's very ghastly. Have you ever had such a dream? Someday you may especially after this class. <laughs> so you're dreaming, and your head is severed by a sword. Huh, it's horrible. And then you're looking down and seeing your head all bloody laying on the floor. Is there any reality to this? It really doesn't make sense, because your eyes are in your head. <laughs> if your head's laying on the floor, how can you see your head laying on the floor? <laughs> but still, you're so, you're so disturbed. You're in so much anxiety and misery because that's what you're seeing. Because you're in a dream. All the pleasures and pains of this world are just phenomena within a dream. Srila Prabhupada explains the calamities are like dreaming that you're being attacked and eaten by a tiger. Which is very pertinent to the world news today. In one zoo in America, a tiger escaped, injured and killed people in a zoo. Now, that person being killed by the tiger. The newspapers don't explain it this way, but it's a dream. It's a daydream. A night dream, sometimes we think we're being eaten by a tiger. That is compared to the calamities of this world. And in other times, we dream, Prabhupada says, that we're sitting on a golden chariot. We're wearing a crown and beautiful decorated silk and jewel bejeweled robes. We are the king. And other times, we dream that we're flying in the sky and we could go anywhere and we could do anything. We just jump and we just zoom, soar through the air and it's so fun. No more 
Dadar station trains. <laughs> no more Bombay traffic jams and pollution. You just, you want to go to Bhaktivedanta Hospital from Radha Gopinath Temple, you just get on the roof and jump. And <laughs> so nice. Have any of you ever had a dream like that? <laughs> but then you have to wake up. So the dualities of this material world can only exist as long as we are in this dream, under the influence of maya. Maya means that which is not. Now, according to Vaishnava philosophy, material existence exists. It is real. It is the energy of the Lord. Actually, material nature is eternal. But all manifestations within material nature are temporary. They are always in a state of transformation. The cosmic manifestation in which unlimited universes are, are existing <clears throat> is created within the Mahatattva of the Lord. Therein the Lord has injected all the 25 ele or elements of material existence. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego, the working senses, the uh, knowledge acquiring senses, the mind, the intelligence, the ego, all of these things are existing within material existence. And then the Lord creates the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And then he glances within it. When he glances within it, he puts unlimited living entities who are meant to enjoy and suffer their karma. And then the Lord enters into material existence in the form of time. The time activates the modes of material nature and then creates so many combinations. 8,400,000 species of life. And then the goodness, passion, and ignorance affects everyone in so many different ways. Where there is enjoyment and there is suffering. And we are all in that dream state. The Lord declares, it is all a dream. That which is not. Yes, material existence exists. This body exists. The dream is that the soul identifies with the body. The soul identifies with being the enjoyer and sufferer of this world. And therefore success and failure, honor, dishonor, happiness, distress, pleasure, pain, to gain, to lose, to be born, to die, it has nothing to do with the soul. The soul is Atmarama. It is self-sufficient, eternal. It is of a spiritual essence. But when the soul misconceives that I am this body and I am in, and everything in relation to this body is mine, that is a dream. It can only exist when we are under this spell of maya. And in this dream we make so many plans, plan makers, plans of how to enjoy, plans of how to stay healthy, plans of how to somehow or other avoid suffering. Unlimited plans the human mind creates. But because they are all in a dream, all our plans are ultimately condemned to the experience of old age, disease, and death. 
And according to the particular nature of our desires within this dream, the soul is then transferred to one of the 8,400,000 species of life. But Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita, Yanisha Sarvabhutanam Tasyam Jagrati Samyami Yasyam Jagrati Samyami Sanisha Pashyatomani that what is day for awaken for a enlightened being is night for the conditioned soul. And what is day for the conditioned soul is night for the self-realized. A materialistic conditioned soul is very much awake to making his or her plans for happiness and pleasure in this world. These plans for sense gratification can never be fulfilled. Krishna systematically, scientifically explains how it works in the Bhagavad Gita. That this kama, this desire to enjoy within material existence, it's like fire. The fire is crying out, give me fuel. And it's burning in our hearts. And we give it fuel. It's promising us satisfaction. It gives us enough sense of satisfaction to keep us under the enslavement of its dictation. <clears throat> but that fuel is quickly consumed and it gives more strength, more power, and a louder voice to karma, to lust. And then we have to have more. And the more you give it, the more it needs. The more you give it, the more you become its slave. And Krishna explains in Gita, <coughs> its whole purpose is only to make you suffer. The pleasure is only to increase your suffering. That is how Maya works. Now we can go to uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, to New Age philosophers, to so many other people who are writing many, many books describing how, how this whole enjoyment process takes place. <clears throat> but everyone's speculating. Krishna is the creator. Krishna is the maintainer of the whole material existence. Mayadhyakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam. Therefore, he is speaking as it is. He knows. He knows how it works. He knows why it works. Yanisha sarva bhutanam tasyam jagrati samyami yehi samsparasha jabhoga dhuka yonaya abhya evate adyanta vanta konteya nate shuramate bhuta. Krishna tells it as it is. An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery which are the pleasures of material life. Because such pleasures have a beginning and end. In the end, you're going to suffer. So the pleasures are only to make you attached to the thing that's going to make you suffer. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada says, what is that, cyanide or some poison? Sodium cyanide or something like that. He says, according to scientists, they say it has no taste. Prabhupada said, the reason they say it has no taste is because nobody who's tasted it has ever lived to tell what it tastes like. Because <laughs> as soon as it touches your tongue, you die. 
right? So nobody knows what it tastes like. If you want to try to get a PhD to be the first person to ever analyze what it tastes like, this poison, good luck. <laughs> You'll die. So, <clears throat> material existence is like that. There's the promise of pleasure. But that promise is only meant to infatuate you more and more and more. If someone puts poison in food, slow-acting poison, if someone puts poison in food, and you know the poison's in the food, but you like the taste so much, you just cannot stop eating it. More or less, people do that all the time. Yes? Somebody has diabetes. They know, if I eat this sweet, I'm going to suffer. I'm really going to suffer. I may even die. <clears throat> But Gore Gadadhar made it. <laughs> It's the Mahaprasad of Radha Gopinath. <clears throat> it looks so nice. And look at all these amazing designs he drew on it. Let me just try. Just a little, just a little. I know I shouldn't do it. I know it's not good for me. I know I'm going to suffer. But let me just try a little, just... <laughs> And then... <laughs> we just... <laughs> we just... <laughs> we just keep eating, eating. One, two, three, four, five. We eat the whole offering. And we just get so much in the passion of enjoying it. And the whole while, we're not really enjoying because internally we know, this is bad, I'm going to suffer. The intelligence is saying, no! The sensors are saying, yes! And the mind has the choice. Am I going to listen to my intelligence or am I going to listen to my senses? That's our free will. The super soul in the heart is telling you, Don't eat it, Prabhu. <laughs> You're going to have to suffer. You may have to suffer for weeks, months. You may die. Don't do it. It's not worth it. What's it worth? You know, how long is this pleasure going to last? As soon as it appears, it's gone. Isn't that the way sense gratification is? As soon as you have it, it's gone. <clears throat> it, doesn't, it doesn't last. Shreyas and prayas. So the mind is at the crossroads. The senses are saying, eat it! And the intelligence is saying, don't eat it! And when the mind surrenders to the senses, then the intelligence follows it. And then the intelligence becomes all perverted. Falls onto the dictation of the mind and the senses. Goes away from our well-being, away from the word of God. And then the intelligence starts campaigning for the mind. Yes? Campaigning for the senses. That actually it's Mahaprasad. Don't worry about it. And anyways, why should I trust all these doctors? They're all quacks. <laughs> And anyways, it tastes so good. And we're eating and we're eating and we can't stop eating. We just keep eating more and eating more. And then soon we, we're just so addicted, we, we go downstairs and break into the cabinet and get more. Haribo! <laughs> and the next day, you're in Bhaktivedanta Hospital. <laughs> With all kinds of tubes in your veins and you're... Ah, And the doctor says, what have you done? I enjoyed. 
You suffer for weeks. And then you get out of the hospital. And what happens? You see that <laughs> sand dash. And next to it is the rasgulas and rasmalais. And your intelligence is saying, don't do it again, you fool. Don't you, haven't you learned your lesson? And your mind says, of course I learned my lesson. I, I'm not a fool. Don't call me a fool. I learned my lesson. But your senses are saying, you know, whatever happened last time was just, you know, one of those coincidences. <laughs> because the, by that time, the flame is burning so because you've given so much fuel, that flame of desire for sense enjoyment is just blazing because you fed it. And the voice of the senses is louder than ever and more convincing than ever. You become a slave. And then your intelligence, your mind takes the side of the senses and your intelligence starts to rationalize. Or sometimes your intelligence can't figure out any proper rationalization, so it just shuts off. Okay, mind and senses, I'm all yours. And then you just eat and you 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 keep eating. And then, same thing. Birth after birth after birth. Never learning our lesson. Puna punas charavata charabananam. Chewing that which we've always been chewing. There's really nothing new. It's just the same old sense gratification that we've chewed, we've spit out, we've suffered from, but Maya just keeps putting it in apparently new packages. Yes? Isn't that the way advertisers induce you to buy their product? They package it so nicely. And after a while, they change the packaging. So it's ever new, yes. And then after changing the packaging to make it newer and newer and newer, then it goes back to the old classic packaging. So, oh, just like I used to enjoy. How I remember those good old days. The cleverness of Maya. So a devotee is asleep to that whole dream. but is always awake, awake to reality, that I am the eternal servant of Krishna. Let me remember Krishna. Let me engage my senses, my mind, in the service of Krishna. Let me be enlightened. But the materialistic person is asleep to such enlightenment and immersed in this endless dream. Srila Prabhupada here quotes, Sarvopadiva nirmuktam tatpadatvena nirmalam harishikena harishikesha sevanam bhaktaruchit. That <clears throat> these misconceived illusory designations that we are plagued with. I am this body. I'm a human. I'm a man. I'm a woman. I'm black. I'm white. I'm red. I'm yellow. I'm bronze. I'm young. I'm old. I'm a Brahmin or a Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra or something from another country. Whatever we may be thinking, they are all temporary designations. Now, Krishna consciousness means, according to these particular designations that we may be identified with, that we may be conditioned with, 
we're all eternal servants of Krishna. And if we just engage our propensities, engage this body, engage these designations that we may be conditioned with in Krishna service, by engaging our senses in the service of the Lord of the senses, then we become liberated from all these misconceptions. And we experience the joy of the soul. Now, Mayavadi philosophers, they're so tired of suffering, repeated birth and death, and all of the different phenomena within it. They know it's illusion. They know it's imaginary. They know that from the point of view of reality, it is meaningless. We're making such grand plans. <clears throat> but from the perception of reality, it's all utterly meaningless. <clears throat> from the perception of you, the soul, has no meaning at all. So much suffering. So we want to become God. That is an extension of the same dream 